You've got questions? I've got some answers. Welcome to another Q&A Friday. Thanks for tuning in. Today we cover a couple of interesting questions. Um, one is, uh, how's that minimalist thing going for you? Uh, am I a professional TV actor? That's <laughs> kind of funny. Um, bike rack, how much does it extend beyond the bumper? I'm gonna cover that and give a demo there. And um, how is parking the Travado? And then the last question is an interesting one. Um, uh, the pursuits with van life channels full time plus a home base does not compute. I'm reading that is, am I a fake van lifer? Stay tuned. Hey, Go Small, Live Large viewers, thanks for tuning in today. Really appreciate each and every one of you tuning in. My name is Scott. I am your host. Welcome to Go Small, Live Large. Uh, we are a channel dedicated to sharing with you van life stories, places that we're visiting, people we're meeting, and living out of a Travato uh, full-time and working out of a Travato full-time. So I'm a full-time RVer uh, in a Class B RV. And if you haven't subscribed yet and those subjects are of interest to you, um, please consider subscribing. Uh, channel growth is going crazy. You guys are amazing. You gals are amazing. I think I have the best YouTube audience on YouTube. but. Hey, I'm biased. Okay, so Q&A Friday. If you're not familiar with that, you guys send me the questions. Look at that. Oh, get rid of the keyboard. Get rid of the keyboard. Look at that. You guys send me the questions, and I will well, we'll answer those. All right? So tonight, the first question comes from Margaret McCullough. Uh, she, says, L -L, she says, LOL. Um, so how is that minimalist thing going for you? LOL. Uh, Margaret, great question, and I gotta tell you, it is one of the biggest, coolest things that I really didn't expect, which is getting rid of stuff. I can't, I just actually sent 16 pounds of clothes, uh, slow UPS truck to Florida home base, um, cause I'm not using it. I have a 60 day rule. I've got a, a video coming up on the 60 day purge where those uh, clothes got pulled out of the closet. Uh, so watch for that coming up probably next week. Um, but the minimum, minimalism thing is just so, so comfortable. Oh, excuse me, it's warm in here. So it's uh, so comfortable for me. Um, it's just, it's great going into someplace and not feeling um, forced or compelled to buy something. It's just the most amazing feeling. So how's it going for you? I give it a big, thumb, big, big thumbs up um, on the minimalism thing. And my question would be for you uh, out there is, um, you know, my, my question for you as a viewer would be, uh, how are you treating minimalism? How are you looking at resources? How are you looking at things to purchase or not purchase and things to purge? That would be a, a question I would have for you. And do you have a game plan for that? Certainly if you're moving into the RV uh, lifestyle, um, you really need to reconsider things. Um, let me show you this just for a, so let me just show you this real quick um, as a teaser. So I've actually gotten rid of the bag on the bed. Didn't need it, it was holding clothes I hadn't used since I got in full time, which is February. So got rid of the bag, it looks a lot better. Again, it's a teaser for the video that's coming up. Purge the cupboards, purge the cabinets. It's just really, really great. So great question, thank you, Mark. Next question comes from Thomas Mullen. Thomas Mullen wants to know, are you a professional TV guy or actor? You're pretty good at it. No, <laughs> I'm not a professional. I take that as a very much a compliment. Uh, Tama, sorry, not, not Tama, Tama Mullen. Uh, much appreciate that. I take it as a compliment and um, I just kind of actually feel fairly comfortable in front of the camera. Um, it's uh, been a learning curve on the editing, but actually being in front of the camera is, um, it's kind of feels natural to me, to be honest with you. So uh, thank you for the compliment. Next question comes from Chris M. Chris M says, I've been watching your channel since you ordered the very much loved Lily, Lily, my Travato. Um, he asks uh, about the bike rack and how much beyond the bumper, the 21 feet of the actual van, does the bike rack stand out? So uh, we will be giving a demo and the, and the tape measure on that tonight. Let's go. All right, so Chris M wants to know how much bigger is the bike rack adding to the length of the vehicle? So let's do a quick measurement. So the vehicle is about 21 feet and the bike rack itself is extending um, 
I'd say about 20 inches, 20 inches from the back of the uh, door frame. And then if you look at the handles, and then if we look at the handles, uh, we're probably another few feet. So I'd say it's about 30, 36 inches overall in additional uh, length beyond the um, the uh, by back of the uh, back of the rig. Um, look at the web, spider web, cool. So um, still, it doesn't compromise a parking spot. Uh, I am very careful when I back up. Um, you can see the width there or the um, additional depth, um, but it really doesn't affect the way I park. Um, just when I back into something, which isn't very often, I like to go forward. So again, typical parking spot here and um, works out really well. So there you go. All right, next question. Next question comes from uh, Steven Stringer, uh, who uh, talks about big plus you can move easily to take advantage of the shade when parked. Speaking of parking, do you ever feel the Travada was too long for city driving or parking or pull into an auto spot at a rest area? Um, just wondering if the bikes make uh, the back too long. Are you still considering a roof box for storage? So a roof box on storage, you know, a storage box on the roof, nope. Because um, it's just a place to store stuff that I don't need. I've jettisoned a whole bunch because um, I never used it. And if I had it on a roof, I certainly wouldn't use it because it would be a pain in the rear end to get to. So no on roof box storage. Um, bike racks, we just talked about that. And Can you for a second? yeah. So that was cool. Um, I had somebody, I still have the window open, as you can see here, and uh, lots of people walking uh, today, and uh, somebody came, uh, Paul and Cheryl, from Minnesota, hello, um, came up and uh, they were curious, uh, Travano curious, and uh, had a bunch of questions. I gave them a little tour of Lily and answered a bunch of questions, and uh, they're kind of considering um, getting a rig and hitting the road, which, Paul and Cheryl, do it. <laughs> so let's keep going. Uh, so Steven Stringer talking about um, Travado too long for city driving. Nope. Uh, parking. Nope. Um, pulling into auto spots or rest areas. Absolutely not. Although if the car section is really full, I kind of go to the RV truck section, which is uh, really long. So uh, bottom line is it is very easy to drive. Uh, there is no issues with um, length or parking. Um, and uh, um, it's a great question. Thank you, Steven. So uh, this is a great question uh, from Color Me Dubious, which is a frequent question asker. Um, and he asks a really interesting question, and this has been on my mind for a while, so I want to spend a little time on this today. And his question is, um, Scott, you know I value your content and you have immeasurably helped me narrow down my purchasing decision, but, all caps, dot, 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 the pursuits with van life channels, full timer, plus a home base, does not compute. Um, so Color Me Dubious, I'm kind of taking that as, I'm doing fake van life because I didn't sell everything to get into a van and start traveling full time. And it does weigh on my mind. So for a few reasons. So let's let's spend a little time on that because a lot of the YouTube channels, they bought a Sprinter used and they built it out over weeks and months uh, on their own. Uh, so they have a very a low um, you know, dollar amount invested. You know, the van's probably you know 10, 15, 20 grand, another five, 10 to build out. So less than 50, they're into their big Sprinter vans. They're always white. Um, met a lot of folks at the Midwest uh, Van Life Meetup that have done just that. Uh, I'm unusual. Um, I bought my rig. I bought a Winnebago Travato after nearly 300 hours of research, looking at the commercially produced vehicles. This was the right vehicle for me. Now, does it make my van life experience any less real because I bought it versus built it? Um, I'm thinking not. And, and the reason for that is, well, I would love to have maybe a different interior color. White would be cool. And maybe some tile. Every person that I've had in my rig that has built their own is insanely, jealous is too strong, envious isn't right, impressed with the uh, mechanical systems, heat, hot water, cold water, both running at the touch of a switch. Um, did I mention heat? Air conditioning, toilet, shower, sinks, uh, a bed, lots of storage, solar, lithium. 
The rage now is to do lithium. I've got a Volta system in my rig that I make my own electricity. I don't have to do anything more than drive it around or maybe plug it into an RV park when I get someplace. Um, and they're very impressed with all of that capabilities. And the floor plan is super flexible. So I guess the first question, Color Me, is you know, because I bought it and didn't build it, am I any less serious about van life? I don't think so. I don't find uh, those that built theirs any more capable than me. Um, I probably wouldn't even be doing this if I had to build my own, to be quite quite frank, because I just wouldn't do it. I wouldn't I wouldn't have the comfort and the confidence to do it. Um, I like having the systems and the warranties and and, and the service and blah blah. Um, so the next thing you mentioned is home base. So am I a fake full-time van lifer living and working because I have property um, that I didn't sell and cash in for everything to finance this lifestyle? Again, I don't think so. Uh, I think I'm a little bit of the opinion that, um, maybe I'm breaking the rules a little bit here, but uh, our properties, um, you know, me and Kyle, our properties are actually income producing properties through Airbnb. So I actually don't have a place to live. Um, which is really ironic. Um, home base Florida is um, part-time Airbnb, then we have full-time Airbnb, another property in Florida. I got a rental, a condo, another rental uh, outside of Chicago. So I actually don't have a place to live full-time all the time. So I'm not homeless in the sense that I sold everything to do van life. Um, and frankly, and if I had my druthers and Kyle was totally into this um, and we could sell the properties, I think we'd actually do it. But we found a better way to generate some income and make a better financial runway um, by leveraging those real estate assets um, to income produce while I do van life. He joins me. Hot in here, guys, sorry. Um, and um, so, you know, it's an interesting question. And, and, I, and I, so again, is, am I authentic van life because I have some real estate? that I can't really go to. Um, am I any less authentic van life because I didn't build my rig? Am I any less van life because I'm not doing YouTube full time and making jewelry or digital products, which I want to do some of those things, but am I any less official van life working and living full time from my Travado because I don't have a job and I'm you know, kind of a starving artist? Um, I don't think it's any less. I mean, I haven't... Uh, you know, I, I, it does weigh on my mind because I don't, uh, uh, am I doing fake van life? Um, you guys be the judge though. And what I think I'm, I'm kind of proving out is you don't have to sell everything. You don't have to have the traditional uh, huge size RV. You don't have to quit your job. Um, you don't have to not do this because your, your spouse isn't into this full time. Uh, so I think in a lot of ways I'm cutting new trails here uh, in, in some ways. Um, so Color Me, I, I hope that answers your question. Um, I will have to respectfully disagree with you um, because Van Life Channel full-timer plus home base, um, it's okay. I am full-time since February, part-time since last October. I have uh, really no desire to go back to home base until the holidays in end of this year, 2019. I really appreciate your question though, because um, it does weigh on me. Am I fake van life or am I a genuine? Um, again, you guys be the judge, um, or not <laughs> to be the judge. We should be judging each other, I don't think. We do that too much anyway. Um, I'm just thrilled to have you watching, me sharing, we learning together. Um, I got to share uh, some of the most amazing places. We just posted um, at Texas, uh, Austin, Texas last week. And because of van life, or even part-time RV lifestyle, i able to see so many more cool things. So, very long answer, but a really passionate answer to something that weighs on me when I roll into, a, again, a van life meetup. And I'm usually the only commercially produced rig everybody else has bought theirs and built it out um, but I am no less serious about van life no less serious about minimalism no less serious about traveling and experiencing and no less serious about sharing so um, appreciate the question thank you for being a, a frequent and impassioned uh, question asker color me dubious 
All right, so with that, I thank you for joining us. Um, if you got something out of this, please like, subscribe, share, click the bell for notifications. Um, just got so many great things coming up. Um, you are amazing, each and every one of you, and I really, really appreciate it. Frankly, back to Killer Me Dubious's question, if I wasn't doing YouTube, I probably wouldn't be doing van life. I'll think about that. So you folks are the cause. You folks are the reason I'm doing this and got this journey started. And I thank each and every one of you because without you, this really wouldn't have even taken, taken flight. Um, so until then, I wish you to journey on. So as I was driving back to my Audience Angels uh, parking lot where I've been staying the last couple of days, look at this amazing space. This is the old cream of wheat factory, uh, now condo lofts. Um, so I've been camping out in the parking lot. So a big shout out to Tony. Thanks, buddy. Um, so I was thinking about Color Me's uh, question on, on van life. And is it my fake van life because I have a house um, and haven't sold anything to get out of it? I would love to know what you think. What does van life mean to you? What does RV lifestyle mean to you? Um, do you have to sell it all to get into an RV? Uh, what does RV lifestyle mean to you? I would love to know. I'd love to get a debate going about this because again, I think there is some some bias in the RV community that self-made, self-converted Sprinter vans are legitimate van lifers and somebody like me with a Travato is a little less legitimate because I didn't build it. Um, somebody like me that has a full-time job uh, working from the road is a little bit less uh, authentic than van life that's creating stuff and selling and making you know some money on the road, which I would love to do. It's my goal, uh, but not doing that currently. Am I less authentic van life because I do a lot of urban camping versus boondocking out in the wilderness? Am I less authentic van life because I have a lithium equipped Travado? I, I'm asking you. I am dying to know what you, the audience, whether you have an RV, you want an RV, you're no time, part time, full time. What are your thoughts on what is authentic van life? What's authentic RV life? Um, so please comment. Let's get a, a discussion going because it would be very, very interesting to me um, to know what your thoughts are. So with that, I will call it a wrap. See you later. Thanks for tuning in. Really appreciate it. You guys are amazing. Oh my God. Ooh, the bugs.